Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the function called choose. So like most people you might not have heard of this function before so hence the video to introduce you to the function and just show you the benefits of using it. It's a very relatively straightforward uh, function to use but what we're going to do is rather than talk through the function too much and sort of confuse it or make it more complicated than it is we've got a couple of examples we're going to jump straight through uh, so that you can understand and see how it works. So we've got two examples. The first one on the screen, you can see we've got a number of uh, dates there in column B. And we're going to use the um, choose function to help us return the month name. So rather than having uh, the format you see there, so we've got the month, the number, and then the year, we're just going to put, uh, be able to use choose to define which month name we want to show. So to do that, we're going to step here. So first thing we're going to need to do here is to identify what the actual month number is. So for January, it'll be the number one, February is number two, and March is three, as in those numbers, they are within the 12 months of the year. To do that, we've got the real simple function of month. So just do M-O-N-T-H. And we can literally select our date. And regardless of what day and number or date it is within there, it's just going to tell us what the month is. So we can see all those in January are 1, February are 2, and March will be 3 once the formula has gone down. So that's great. Um, so what we want to do now is define um, which label or return, result return coincides with each one's, one of these numbers. To do that, we're going to use the choose function. So simply to do that, what we need to do is just select into our month column here and having selected into the column we can type in our function so to do that we're going to do the equal sign and enter the word choose just like that and from our prompt we can see chooses a value or action to perform from a list of values based on an index number so our index number is going to be the value that we have in column c so what we do is open our brackets and we can see the um, arguments that we can enter into the function so the first thing we want to do is choose the index number. So for each, it's going to be in the corresponding row in uh, column C. So we can see you choose the number one. So once we've done that, we do a comma. And this is now where we need to enter in the values that we want to coincide with that number. And how this will work is, as you can see in our prompt, we've got value one, value two, value three, and so on. And we can actually have up to 254, I believe it is, uh, values within this function. Quite a lot, um, but obviously we won't need that for all these months just yet. Uh, but just so you know, you've got plenty of flexibility um, if you need it. So what's gonna work? So we've got, oh yeah, value one, two, and three. So how this works is our function will take in the number that we have in column C, and for us it's gonna be number one. And what it will do is it'll index within the function and he'll understand and go through and pull what value number one is. So one coincides with value number one. If the number was two, what's coming into our index number, um, as you see down here from row seven, then what it will do, it will find the second value with it or store within this function and so on and so forth. Meaning it's really useful way of putting this information through. And it means that you also only need to add this in once and regardless of if these numbers change, as we'll go for example later, you can see that it will update and pull the newly um, corresponding value. So for us, what we want to do is now enter the 12 months of the year here. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a shortcut um, because obviously we've only got uh, January to March here. I'm only going to just enter like the first five or six months of the year just to sort of save a bit of time in the video. But you'll be able to see that exactly the process that you need to do to enter the full 12. OK, so first one we've got is January. Cool. So I've just done there the first uh, seven I've got there actually. What I work for example, but you can see that if you want to add in all the 12, you can see that obviously the values here are going to gradually add up. So we're on to seven at the moment. So each value is just separated by a comma. And for us, because we're returning in here uh, text values, we just use those quotations around each of the month names. Once you've entered the number that you require, we can do the uh, close brackets and then you can see what the function looks like. So just to repeat what I mentioned before, Column C3 is going to be the uh, index number. 
And for us in this first row in row three, it's the number one. So what it's going to do is say, okay, we're looking for number one. It'll there go for uh, or go to the first value, number one value in this range of um, values, and it'll pull back January. If it's if the index number is number two, it'll go to the second value, so on and so forth. And if it was there in our examples, uh, for example here, it would say, okay, right, if you've got the number seven, go to the seventh value in your list. Once you've done that, if you just hit enter, and you can see it's pulled through the correct value for us, which is January. And then we can pull this down, and you can see how that will update for all those other ranges there. Cool, so that's our first example. Uh, and just to show another example of where this can be used, um, because with month, I'm sure there'll be a few people who have uh, uh, the answer, say there are other ways and maybe more straightforward ways you could use uh, other functions to pull back the month number, I mean month name, sorry. And I completely agree with you, there are those other options. And we will do a video on that coming up shortly uh, for those who are not aware, so that you understand how that works. But to go into another example, how you can use this, I'll just unhide these columns here. And you can see here in column G, we've got um, a load of numbers. So they go from one to five, but they're randomly ordered in column G. And what we're going to do here is use the choose function to help us um, coincide each of these review indexes with an actual result. So let's say these are a survey result um, that customers have been popular, uh, populating so that we can understand what sort of uh, service they received, going from bad, unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory, average, good, and great. So we're going to use the choose function to obviously pull through or, or coincide what the index number is versus what the actual, um, should we say, the category or the result is. So in order to do that, it's very the same as the months we've put in here. But this time, rather than typing in each of the values manually, we're going to use cell references to pull out each of those references there. This will enable us to make these uh, more dynamic. So if we want to change these going forwards, uh, we are obviously able to do that without having to update the formula. So to put the choose function again, we do equals and do choose and open our brackets. And as we know, the index number is going to be the uh, number we want to get through here and do a comma. And then this time, rather than typing value one, I'm just going to select the one we've got here in the, in the, first, well, the first value we have here in this range, which is J2 for bad. Next one is going to be unsatisfactory. And then go to, if I get to it, there you go. We've got average there. Good is our fourth. And then great will be our fifth and final one. So close brackets there. So we can see that again, G3 is our index number. And then we've got these current side and other five values that are referencing cells to pull through the actual value. So once that's done, we can hit enter. And then what we'll do is pull this formula down so that it's populated for the full range. Okay, and we can see we've got an error here. Aha, so if anyone wasn't uh, didn't notice that before, what we've done here is we haven't uh, fixed the, the reference that the cells are looking at. So in order to do that, what we need to do is add the dollar symbols in here for each of these values. You can do this by either holding down the shift button and pushing the bar, uh, dollar symbol, what is number four on your keyboard, or you can actually select into each of the references and hit F4 on your keyboard, which will lock uh, in the same manner. So once I've done that, now if I pull this function uh, formula down, you can see it's uh, maintained its cell reference. And the reason it did that is because, again, anyone who didn't know, because I hadn't previously locked these cell references, what it was doing is as I was dragging the, um, the formula down, these references were gradually getting lower and lower until it got to the point down here where obviously it was just referencing blank cells. So there's no value to pull through and that's why we got the zero result. So having now successfully entered it, you can see we've been able to pull through our results. The particularly beneficial way of doing this is if you have your survey built uh, by whatever tool you're using to do surveys, uh, or whether you're doing it manually, or if it's more of an automated process, by having it pull through um, a review index, so an actual number, uh, we're then able to obviously use that index to then um, coincide with each of our results. The benefit of doing that is if you suddenly decide at a later date you want to change one of your state, uh, statuses, so rather than having great, you want to have amazing, first word that comes to my mind, you can see that it's going to update uh, all those that coincide with amazing. And actually, one better to do will probably do good because you'll see the update um, uh, for more examples we have in our list there. Um, let's call this um, very good. 
So you can see there when it updates, it updates all of them. And this is a particularly useful way of doing it, like I say, so that you can um, maintain this information going forward, even if your actual result names or results uh, do change. So we hope that was very useful for you and you can start using that choose function and you can start to see some examples of where you might want to start using it. It's not limited to just pulling the values. You can also have the choose function perform um, different calculations or do actual different functions for you. So rather than say entering the values, you could say, okay, well, if it's uh, the index is number one, uh, number one might ask it to do another formula. It might add two numbers together, whereas value number two might do a different formula. Uh, to give another example, what is obviously getting a bit more complicated, but still you can see that the possibilities of using the choose function are by no means limited at all. Like I say, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel uh, so that you're notified and you receive all of our future videos. We've got links in the description of this video to our Instagram and Facebook page. Uh, so why not check those out again great platforms if you've got any questions you can get in contact with us and on that note if you do have any questions you can also drop us a comment below this video and we will get back to you as soon as possible thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video